Hi parents. Just a reminder that you can get links to all the video clips on the website authortoauthor.org in the parent resources section and that you can get notifications whenever we post a new video by subscribing to this YouTube channel Parent to Parent. And so today I want to build on an idea that I talked about in the previous um, video. Um, the ideas of nudging development and then honoring approximations. The idea that people learn to do things best when somebody is giving them just the right next small step and when someone's very comfortable with them doing it in a very approximated way. We don't expect people to do things perfectly right from the beginning. Well, if we're going to think about those conditions being in place for learning, then we have to think about the actual teaching part, what we do. And so even that word teaching is kind of a tricky one because it's easy to fall into the trap of putting all sorts of things in place of teaching. So let me give you a couple of examples. It's easy to fall into the trap of giving children reminders. Now, certainly we should give children re reminders. I have four children. I give them reminders all the time. Reminders are great. It's not a problem to give a child a reminder. But it's not teaching. Reminding by its very nature means the person knows how to do it. Reminding just isn't teaching. For example, if I remind my children to make their bed in the morning, right, that's just a reminder. It's not showing them how to do it. It's just a reminder to make their bed. Certainly we can give them a reminder. It's just not teaching. Same thing with telling someone to do something or t telling a child to do something. Telling isn't teaching either. It's just telling. Um, several of our children play soccer. So my wife and I have been to hundreds of soccer games over the years. It's always very interesting to listen to soccer coaches, whether it's our own coaches or coaches from other teams. Right? In a soccer game, they're going to do a lot of telling. Right? In the middle of a game isn't necessarily the time to teach something. But even the telling part is interesting because you can tell very quickly which are the coaches that um, just tell what not to do, which isn't very helpful, versus the ones who tell what to do. There's a big difference between saying something like, don't pass the ball to the other team, which isn't very helpful. We just saw that and we know it didn't go well, right? It's very different than telling what to do. Oh, let me tell you what to do. Keep your head up when you're dribbling. Keep an eye out for other players, right? That'd be telling what to do rather than what not to do. And even with that, it's still telling. It's not teaching. Correcting is another one, right? Correcting isn't teaching either. Correcting is pointing out what you don't know or something that's wrong. Teaching instead would be showing you how to do it. Um, one of our daughters takes ballet classes. It's always interesting to watch a ballet class because then she'll talk about getting corrections. And in ballet, they've already taught something, but now when you're doing it, they give little corrections. Ooh, lift your foot a little bit, do this, do this. Just these little corrections, right? And they're fine, but it's not teaching. It's based on the idea that they've already taught something. And so if we go back to each of those examples, we could think about teaching with those. So um, we can certainly give someone a reminder to make their bed, but we could also teach something. We could teach them how to make the bed if they didn't know how, how to make their bed better, and even more so, we could teach them how to remember to make their bed each day. We could say, oh, let me show you how I, when I'm having trouble remembering something, what I do. Let me model how to do that. Let me show you how I remember to do something. We could teach someone how to remember to do something, which is different than just giving a reminder. And if we go right back to soccer, those great soccer coaches, when it's a practice, they're showing, they're demonstrating, teaching something. They're not just saying, keep your head up when you dribble. They're actually modeling it. They're demonstrating what it looks like to dribble with your head up. Right? And in ballet, when they're giving corrections, that's always been preceded by them demonstrating something. Let me show you this combination. Let me model what this looks like. Let me teach you how to do this. And then in the moment, they're giving those little corrections but they've already taught something up front. They've shown them how to do that. And so with any examples like that of anyone learning to do anything, if we're gonna teach rather than just tell our mind correct, then we'd have to think about what tools we could use. So earlier today, I had a couple of writing conferences online with a couple of fifth graders who were writing essays. And so when I was teaching today, I had to have some tools with me ready to go, right? I was ready to use this um, essay that a professional author wrote about the designated hitter rule in baseball. Because then I could say, oh, let me show you what this professional author does. Let me show you how this author does it. You could try this out also. That's now teaching. Let me show you how somebody else does it. Or I could say, let me show you how I do it. Let me show you what I do in my essay. Oh, now you could go try that out. So I could use myself as the mentor, right? I could use myself to model that. And even today, I, at one point, I showed how another student did it. I said, oh, you know what, let me show you what Andrew did in his essay. You could try this out also. All right? So I could use any of those things to teach with. 
Well, it's the same thing with teaching anyone to do anything. Um, one of our daughters loves to sing, right? And if she was taking voice lessons, a voice teacher could teach with different tools, different ways of teaching it. A, a voice teacher could say, oh, let's, um, let's say she's going to teach something like relaxing your jaw um, to open a note up more, let's say. And so she could say, let's watch how this professional singer does it on this YouTube clip. Right? They could watch how somebody else does it. Or she could just demonstrate it herself. She could say, a teacher could say, oh, let me show you. Watch how I relax my jaw. Watch how I do this. Right? Or um, she could say, let's watch how another student does this. You know your friend over here? Let's see how your friend does that. So you could use any of those three ways of teaching it, but that would all be teaching. It'd be one way of teaching by demonstrating or modeling how to do something. Okay? And you could use all sorts of different tools to teach that with. At home, the one we'd use most often is let me show you how I do this. Right? As a parent at home, you could always model, oh, let me show you how to do this. And then the child could try that out. That's very different than saying to a child, oh, here's all the missing periods. Right? Circling missing periods isn't teaching anyone how to use periods. That's just pointing out what they did wrong. Instead, it would be different. If, let me show you how I use periods. Right? Finding misspelled words isn't teaching anyone how to become a better speller. It's just pointing out the things that they missed. And I'm not saying not to do that. If the goal was just getting something to be more correct, then we would just correct. But if the goal is teaching and learning, then we'd actually have to show the child how to do something. The last thing is, I certainly right, realize how challenging this is. It's much, much easier for me to do this in schools when it's other people's children. As much as I talk about these kind of things, it's easy for me to fall into that trap at home of giving t rem um, reminders, telling, correcting, right, rather than teaching. And certainly there's plenty of times where I don't teach things. There are times where we just need a reminder. But now at times where we're trying to do more teaching at home, perhaps, at that point we would need to think about what does it really mean to teach. So. I'm going to end with a clip of um, a girl reading a book, um, Charlie, um, her mom sent this in. And so um, um, as you're watching Charlie read her book, think about what happens if somebody says, oh, Charlie, let me show you what you could do. Let me show you how to do this, as opposed to saying, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, let's fix this. Right? Again, if we're thinking about teaching, we'd have to actually model and show how to do that. So thanks so much. Enjoy watching Charlie. This is my book, and I'm going to read it to you. The day I got my new puppy. The day I got my new puppy. Illustrated, written by Charlie Moore. Illustrated by Charlie Moore. One day I was getting a new puppy. I was so excited I was on the way there in the car. And we, and we finally got there. I was so excited. And then we saw two big dogs. And they were the parents. Ruff, 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 ruff. Then they handed Chris to Daddy. Then Grizz cried. We rubbed his be back. Then he stopped. Then we showed Grizz to Scarlet, our other dog. The end. <laughs>